this is June Younger. I'm the Chamber Coordinator at the Commerce City Chamber of Commerce and today I am with Sanford Williams with BPL Plasma. Um, Renee Bullock and I went through the process of just becoming a donor and found out that uh, Renee could not donate today. So Sanford also went through the process and he is now donating. If you can look at them slowing through the tubes and his plasma is filling up the bottle. So Sanford, tell us a little bit about the process and how are you feeling right now? Uh, so um, in the beginning, uh, the anti environmental commission actually had a show proof of address. Um, I also once they, once they finished that, I had to, you know, read a binder. I also had to you know, look at a video. I had to read the rules of the center. And then after that process, I went in, did the kiosk, um, answered all the questions that's needed that they um, asked me. After I finished the kiosk, I went into a you know, MS uh, office, and then they performed a hands-on physical. Also asked me um, where I want any medications or anything like that. Once the process is finished, they walked me onto the floor, explained the dirty floor rules, and then I came out and you know the phlebotomist, you know, explained the procedure to me. She explained, you know, what the solutions are for, and you know, after the benefit process. And, I don't know what that was for, but. <laughs> Well, tell us a little bit about um, Renee couldn't donate today because you do have age limits and we did not know about that. Yeah, so um, we do have an age limit from 18 to 65 years old. And we also have um, restrictions if you take any medication, certain medications or anything like that. We have restrictions against if you have any um, previous uh, uh, vaccines or procedures or anything. And also, um, uh, if you have any blood clots or any medical procedures that were recently performed, you can do that as well. And, and that's basically it. You know, so we want to make sure that you are healthy enough to donate and also you're not taking anything that will prevent you from, you know, um, uh, feeling a certain way, uh, passing out, having a severe reaction. So we try to take all the safety precautions to ensure that you are healthy enough to donate. Now, we've had questions from our viewers asking about if you have diabetes, is this something that would be safe for them to do? Yes, if you have diabetes, um, it would not be safe for, um, for you to donate. Um, also, you have to be um, at least 108, 110 pounds to donate um, in order to donate, and you can't be over, I think that the weight requirement is 110 to 500 pounds. So um, that is the weight requirement. You can have diabetes, you can get the previous history of diabetes, uh, blood clots, um, again, medical procedures, uh, recent uh, surgeries, um, and again, certain medications you cannot take as well. Blood thinners is a good example. So any things like that you can't donate, but for the most part, uh, some of the medications, like if you're taking uh, just multivitamins, um, you know, just staying healthy, um, you can donate. So certain things you can't take over the counter, it will allow you to donate, but certain things you can't. So it just all depends on what's on our um, medication list, and um, and then we'll kind of go from there. But we can explain all the procedures and everything to you once you enter in the door. And that was another. Uh, reason that would have kept Renee from donating today was that he had hip surgery not quite a year ago um, so he would have been on a deferred list right? Correct and then so hip surgery if you were um, in the military and visit certain countries that is another deferral as well um, if you don't disclose this any um, tattoos or body piercings that is a deferral as well, so we just want you to be honest with us about times. Um, okay. Well, if you're moving right along there. 
The process usually lasts, um, they say, 45 minutes to an hour, yes. right? Yes. You yeah. usually, usually fast sometimes, um, depending on if you hydrated well and um, you had a good meal. Okay, so how are you feeling so far? I'm uh, good so far. Doing very, <laughs> very well. You know, no issues so far. Going into another draw cycle. Um, so it goes into um, a draw cycle, and then after the draw cycle, it goes into a um, return cycle. And then it goes into another draw cycle. So we go to kind of like four, four to six draw cycles. And then also we, at the end of the process, you get the saving at the end of the process. So right now it's going to another draw. They return my rare blood cells from the first draw cycle, and now they come to a, another draw cycle. So. so just tell me what to expect while you're sitting here in the chair. Um, so just relax, you know, take it easy. Um, a lot of people bring in, they, um, they, they use their cell phone or um, electronic devices, um, such as um, they bring in a laptop that they have work to do, they bring in a book to read, um, they have some other bring in Bibles. And then throughout the process, you just kind of relax, chill. You can be on your cell phone, you can, you know, talk to someone else while you're on your space time or anything like that. And you can read at the same time as well if you have a book or something that you want to catch up on. So, um, it's, you just basically just relax and let the process take place and feel very comfortable. So, and obviously you can see the bed just comfortable. The one thing you cannot do is fall asleep, correct? Yes. <laughs> Um, so certain rules on the floor, you can't fall asleep obviously during the donation process. Um, you also cannot chew gum or eat candy as well. Um, that could um, play a part in your donation process. Um, but uh, you can't talk loud, you can't have your phone blasting. Again, you can't FaceTime. Um, so those are just some simple, you know, floor rules as you go to any public place. But for the most part, um, you know, you just basically just relaxing. Um, again, you use electronic device and you know, any questions you may have to put the bottom of there, I'm looking for them to come out and answer the questions. Now, during the informational session that we had a, you know, we watched a video, uh, was asked questions, um, we found out that uh, it takes two of these donations for the medication to be made out of. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Yes, um, so if you donate once, um, they, don't, they don't have a full, um, you, it takes two donations in order to make medicine needed. So the first donation is basically, you know, they run multiple tests and everything to see if you're healthy enough to donate. But the second donation they actually use um, to start making the medicine. So if you get to donate at least twice, um, if you don't, um, your plasma is not used. Therefore, you know, the, the purpose of the process um, is insufficient. And we want to be able to use that plasma for the medicine. So in order to make the medicine, we need at least two donations or more, obviously. Um, it takes maybe two or three hundred donations in order to um, um, so take care of one patient um, for a year and um, in other aspects more. So um, we definitely want you to keep coming back once you start donating. Again, it's very, very safe, healthy. You still have to do your uh, more basic lifestyle, exercise, workout. That still helps with the donation process and have it flow a little lot faster. But other than that, um, that is just some of the um, things. We definitely want you to come back. No. <coughs> Sorry. So now we do know that uh, BPL is part of the um, grant process with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for the COVID. Um, you did mention earlier that um, <clears throat> you can test for the antibodies yes. in the plasma. Uh, but tell us, other than COVID, what are the other kind of illnesses that plasma helps uh, what kind of illnesses does it help with? Um, so some of the some of the illnesses is uh, uh, hemophilia, um, like the one, um, antitrypsin, and some others as well. Um, but uh, for the most part, those are the main ones. And then you also have um, if you have um, uh, I was my mind about the other one, but those are two for sure that we kind of focus on um, as a as a company, 
And then also we have, again, we have our program, COVID program to where we're focused on finding the solid antibodies for the, um, for the COVID-19 virus. And we're using those antibodies to create um, the medications in order to fight off the virus. So, um, you know, those things for a great, great cause. Again, the misconception is not valid. Uh, we want to ensure that um, we, you know, let everybody know that um, this is definitely it's for um, healthcare and for patients that's the need and we want to invite everyone to donate. And this, you know, not just for those, but I mean, you can save a life, even the life of the unborn. <clears throat> with the uh, when a woman who is pregnant does not have the same uh, blood um, RH factor, I believe. Yeah. Um, so I know that we had, I believe it was a chamber member actually that said that his wife had to have two shots. Yes. Um, yes. To just help carry the child. So this is very important, not just like I said for the COVID, but for other of life's illnesses. Um, tell us just a little bit about you know the process after. So you are here probably about forty-five minutes to an hour. Afterwards, what happens to the donors? You'll be disconnected. We will, um, you know, wrap it on. We will give you instructions on about the wrap, on when to take it off. It's two, at, at two hours after the donation process. You want to make sure you um, eat a well balanced meal afterwards and then clean up food afterwards. After that process, we take the bands off again after two hours. Um, at the end of that process, you want to make sure that you um, wipe the bed and soap with blood, soap, and water um, to clean up any. Um, any iodine or um, alcohol, depending on if you're allergic to iodine or not. And, um, and that's pretty much it. So if you have anything to do, you, know, you just um, call us, let us know if you feel that in a certain way or whatever. But I'll start it up. If you're both uncritical, you can. You can always ask for very great at the end of the process if you want to place a better life. If you don't want to stay laying there um, back in your time. But it's a pretty easy process. Well, let's just assure, um, you know, this took the process of being a new donor, took a little bit longer, um, maybe, or was it maybe two hours? Yeah. And, but when you come back as an existing donor, then that time is cut to... Yeah, that time, so uh, we like to everybody, we try to get you out of here um, as a new donor, um, within... Um, 130 minutes um, for a return donor, you, you try to get you out of here within 85 minutes, which is an hour 20. So you perform the questionnaire at the kiosk when you first come in as a return donor. For the first time, you had your physical done and all that stuff. The second visit, all you do is go straight to the kiosk and the physicals are performed. Physicals will perform yearly and you'll have a speed run every four months as well. Um, you'll go straight to the screening booth. You'll, you'll get all your files and stuff taken, then you'll come straight to the floor. The process is very, very slow. Um, the second time and beyond. Now, when you get to the floor, depending on if you're hydrated well, you have a well balanced meal, that, um, that process will take a whole lot sooner. So, people get out here as soon as 27 minutes because they come in hydrated, um, exercise regularly, um, and eat a, eat a well balanced meal. Um, so, people get out of here. And it took a little longer because they're having um, a good meal, um, a lot of fatty food, um, having hydrated well. So it will depend on you as a person, the um, same way anything in life. Uh, if you're taking care of yourself, you can go a whole lot faster. If not, it's taking a little longer. But in the end, everything is the same. Well, you know, seem very quick and simple. Uh, not too invasive, other than, you know. Having a needle in your arm there for a while, but um, you know it does for the lives that it will save. That's that's the most important. Yes, that's the most important, I mean, uh, and obviously that will always be the most important. I mean, we understand this to save lives um, and to provide for the healthcare field uh, any way we can. Uh, for example, the COVID-19 virus right now. 
and you know they just do really do what the company and um, in the process hey you know you get money you get paid for your time um, let's not forget about that and you can make it work you know drugs you know between five six hundred dollars in the first thing in a month and then again like i said uh, the power of the month in a year um if you say then uh, if you just want to go on vacation take your trip um we provide that as well so um, again it's you're doing double duty you're taking life um being a good humanitarian and at the same time you know you can pay for your time so you don't want to get about that as well do you have any uh, specials now for the month of June. Yes, we do. So all, all promotional specials right now. You come in, you get sixty dollars first first five donations. Um, if you donate twice before the seventh, you get an extra ten dollars. If you donate six times in a month, you get an extra twenty. And if you donate eight times this month, you get an extra eighty dollars. So you have the potential to get uh, on one donation. You could get, you know, over a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars. So you might get literally a hundred thirty dollars in one donation. So um, we have tons of bonuses at all times. Um, they have times where we're doing special programs or call lists or names or something like that, and then you can you can win extra money anywhere between five to thirty dollars. So um, definitely tons of programs, and that's all for the month. For the month, you refer up to three people to us. Um, you get an extra ninety five dollars. I'm not gonna let everybody donate. And that, that just, that's just a tip of the iceberg. But we are very turn the program for bonuses and some bonuses as well. Well, thank you so much, uh, Stanford, for, you know, doing this. I know this is your first time oh, yeah. donating as well. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you would want to let our chamber members know? Yeah, I mean, um, I was mid, um, I need that. I'll be, Mr. will mention that, um, if you come here to donate, which is um, in Commerce City, 6075 Parkway Drive, uh, Suite 115, Commerce City, Colorado, 80022. And we would love to have you um, at any time. Uh, we are open um, six days a week, 9 to 7, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4 on Saturday, and we are closed on Sunday. Um, eventually, we'll be moving to 7 to 7 next month. On Monday through Friday, 8 to 4 on Saturday, and eventually we'll be open on Sunday as well. So again, um, that's 6075, Parkway Drive, Premier City, Colorado, 80022. And you can visit us at any time between 9 and 7, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4 on Saturday. Well, thank you for all that you guys do here. Um, you have a wonderful staff, uh, very informative. And we look forward to working with you some more at the chamber. Thank you so much. I look forward to working with you as well. Thank you.